Hey, what's going on YouTube? This EXO coming at you today with a slightly different type of video than you may be used to seeing from me. I usually like to throw up a whole bunch of edits and tricks and tips along the way to help make the videos easier to follow, but in this video, I am going to do a complete, uncut, unedited video of how to install a 12 volt amplifier. And even though we're going to be installing this in a house, all of the methods are absolutely applicable to a regular 12 volt installation. We're going to be using this NVX JAD 1200.1. We're going to be basically installing everything that came with it in the box right here in our house. I got everything pretty much all ready to go except for the whole wiring process. I got the amplifier mounted right next to the CT Sounds amp. I've been having a little fun here with the fourth order in my bedroom. Got the little Crescendo Logic battery as a little buffer and our little transformer here was a little makeshift uh, battery charger. But that's a whole different story. So let's get into it here guys. This video is basically just going to show you how easy it is to do this. Installing a car amplifier gets a wicked bad reputation for being 10 times harder than it is. It's simply power and ground and we have that accessible right here in our house. Even though we don't have a car or an alternator, we have our power source right here which is our little battery charger. So that's all you need to know about a home audio setup that runs on 12 volts. So without talking any further, uh, let's go ahead and take our little adapter here from NVX, which allows us to plug in bigger wires into our amplifier. Even though this is a 1200 watt amp, they included this to have zero gauge wire. So with this little adapter, it makes it possible. We're going to tighten it down real snug, make sure nothing's going crazy on us. It's always smart to have nice quality thick gauge cable when you're working with car audio. That way your uh, wire doesn't become a freaking filament and just start melting up on you. So we've installed that. Looks like it's ready to go. Now we're ready for our power and ground. And I usually like to start with my ground, which is right over here. And then after I install the power wire, I connect it with the fuse. So let's go ahead and get our zero gauge, which I have right here. I got some zero gauge wire all ready to go. I went ahead and trimmed off the top here uh, for the last installation. So I'm going to go ahead and recycle this. So let's get our screwdriver and start with the ground. We need to figure out which one that is, so excuse my head for a second. So the ground is going to be right here on the right side, and then on the left side is going to be the power. So let's go ahead and plug this right in, just like that. Perfect. Oh, crap. The camera just fell. Ah, damn it! Freaking death me, I'm telling you. See if that'll work right there, huh? See if you can still see it. All right, let's screw that right in nice and secure. So this is going to be going straight over to our negative post of our battery. Ah, damn it, again! I'm just going to hold the camera and then do it little step by step. And I just got shit all over the lens. Damn it! We got our ground all connected right there. Looking good. So we're going to run that up and let it just kind of hang out um, up near the battery. Just like that. Bam. Alright, get that tucked away in there. So now let's get our power wire, which we already have all stripped away too. Um, this is our RCA, so we got to get that out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead and connect our power wire now. Let me set the camera down for that too, damn it. All right, that should do it. Let's get our little screwdriver. So I guess this unedited video has turned into just like partially edited because I keep dropping shit and the light keeps falling over. But we're going to go ahead and plug this right in just like that, being sure we don't get any stray wire coming out here so it doesn't touch anything. Looks pretty good so far. There we go. Air in business. Get the screwdriver. All right. Tighten that down real nice. Hell yeah. Yep, there we go. And like I showed you guys in the other video, I usually like to tighten it down and then give it a little wiggle. Just reef it around a little bit, which simulates, you know, bending wires to make them look fine, make them look final. And then give it a nice little squeeze. As you can see, we get a little more, get a little more there if you just reef it around a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so now we got that all taken care of. Sweet. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect our remote wire here. This is right in the center. I don't really like that about this amplifier. I wish that it had a either a recessed remote or relocated remote. But it's really no big deal. It still gets the job done. And as long as you wire your stuff safely, you're gonna have no problems with it anyways. So our remote wire is going to go up here to our switch, which we already got right there, which right now it controls our um, 
our lights up back. But we're going to have that also turn on this amplifier since our CT Sounds works with a bass knob little switch, which is pretty cool. I like that. Okay, so we got everything all wired into the switch. Everything's still working, and now we need to go ahead and plug up our grounds and power wire. Uh, power wire to the fuse and ground straight to the negative post of the battery. So let's go ahead and plug up our ground wire first. Okay, we got our ground connection all connected, so now let's get our power wire all connected to our fuse. So the power wire will literally plug right onto this little fuse right here. Now this is when we should see just a little bit of a spark because of the capacitors in the amp are going to start to charge up once we connect this right here. So let's go ahead and do it. You see that? That's a little 1200 watt spark right there. Just getting them capacitors all charged up on the inside. So now let's go ahead and split that a little bit and screw this guy back down. So right now guys, technically we have a powered amplifier. Everything is ready to go and it's only what been like four steps. That's how easy it is guys, quite literally. Alright guys, so our power and ground wire is all connected. So we're just going to do a little quick power test before we plug in our speakers just to make sure we're getting blue lights. Nice, looking good guys. Everything's golden. So let's go ahead and turn that back off. Nice. All right, let's get our speaker wires plugged in, guys, and then we're just going to have to plug in the RCAs, which we got right here. We'll be good to go. Woo! All right, let's go ahead and get... Oh, fucking... Let's go ahead and loosen up these speaker terminals, get them ready for some 8-gauge speaker wire. Whoops, look, I took that one out. There we go. Let's loosen them up. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so we got our first speaker wire here. Let's go ahead and plug that into the negative. Just like that, and then we'll go ahead and plug the positive in. Awesome. Guys, we are officially ready to jam. So let's go ahead and plug in the RCAs and get some bass going. Woohoo! Take these right out of this amp, plug them into this amp, just like that. Okay, guys, so there it is. Just got a little tucking away left to do for the speaker wire. It's really no big deal. I'm probably just gonna fucking leave it like that. But, uh, Alright, let's do a little test, huh? Let's get this show on the road! It'll probably help if I turn my speakers on. Yeah, I did stuff some socks in there because uh, the bass was just a little too much from these guys and it was making that sound like shit. So I just plugged up the little ports there. Let's check it out, guys. I should probably plug in the bass knob real quick. Hold on just one second. Just so I can turn the volume down and stuff. Turn it on, guys. We should have bass. Right when the song ends, we have bass. So we got the volume all the way down right now. Let's see how it sounds. We got some uh, Rodney Wilson coming up here. Oh, we got bass. Nice. Nice. So let's go ahead and adjust our gains. Let's get a screwdriver. And we'll do a little bit of adjustments here. And our gain is all the way down. Turn that up a little bit. There we go. Sweet. Definitely sounds good. We'll give it a little more, a little more gain here. It still sounds nice and clean. We'll go halfway, just like that. All right, let's hear another song. So, 
Oh yeah, that's definitely a lot more bass. Yeah. Sweet. Sounds good in here already. It sounds really good over here. Hell yeah. Sounds great. We're still above 13 volts. Man, I love this freaking battery. Those Crescendo Logic batteries are freaking awesome. We got another Rodney Wilson song here on SoundCloud. Wow. Whoop, it ate it. for a little bit okay guys so what did we learn today we learned that you can literally install an amplifier in like five minutes there's really not too much to it I know the quality of this video is probably really shitty but it's really just to explain or really demonstrate car amplifiers are so easy to install there's literally power ground and remote Remote can be to a switch it can be to an ignition it could even be just a little jumper if you really you know you know, a jerry rigging it, but this is what I do, and literally, it sounds great, so, uh, it's as simple as that, YouTube, this is EXO signing out, sorry for the crappiness of the video, but I'm just trying here, guys, I'm trying, alright, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. <laughs>